In this video, I want to talk about how the difference quotient connects to the slope of the tangent line. Initially, you are introduced to this difference quotient probably pretty early into a pre-calc class. You work it out, you do a lot of simplifications with it on various types of functions. I mean, it may not look exactly like this when you're in pre-calc because they may use an H there. They've, there's different versions of the difference quotient. All right, I'm going to use the X plus delta X version just because I'm doing this as we're going to lead into the derivative for um, into calculus. So that's why I've, I've chose this one. All right, but regardless, the difference quotient um, is something that you work with a lot. And they don't really tell you where it comes from. They just kind of go, okay, here's the difference quotient, and then here's how you simplify it. All right, so what I'm going to do is we're going to try to show you what that really is. All right, so let's say I've got some function f of x here. And let's say that I want to um, put a secant line on it. Okay, so I'm going to put a random secant line on my function. So maybe here and here. So let's see if we can't draw this pretty straight. All right, now that's a secant line, okay? It goes through two points on the curve. All right, so let's label it secant line. Okay, now in general, all right, how do you find the slope of the secant line? All right, how do you find the slope of any line in general? All right, so let's go slope of, and I'm going to sp specifically put secant line here because, all right, it is a secant line to that curve. All right, so slope of secant line. Well, how would you do that? Okay, well, you'd do it the way you would do finding slope of any line. Okay, I've got two points. Might as well use the um, slope formula. All right, so the change in the y's over the change of the x's here. All right, so change of the y's over change of the x's. All right, so that's how I'm going to find this. All right, but set up the way it is right now. Okay, I don't, I don't know anything about those points. I don't know what they are because all I have is a picture of a random function. I don't have the actual function itself. So I'm going to have to come up with the um, points, all right, in generic terms, in terms of variables. All right, so this needs an x and a y here. So the distance here, from here to here, well, I don't know what it is, but I'm going to say it's x. All right, now, if I, how do I, so that makes, here, let's go up here, that makes my um, x coordinate an x in that ordered pair right there. All right, now, how do I find the y value that's associated with that? Well, if I knew the function, then I would just take x and plug it into the function and then calculate that value out. All right, so the best I can do here is I can sit, show that I'm going to plug it into the function, so f of x. All right, so then that right there has to be f of x. Okay, now. For this one over here, I need the x value here. All right, I can't go to a different letter or do anything like that. I already know from here to here is x. So then how much more is it from here to here? Okay, well, I'm running along the x-axis. In other words, I'm this is the change in my x. All right, so the distance starting at 0 all the way to here would be up to x and then plus the change in x. And that's my x coordinate, okay? So for this point right here, let's go all the way out here, x plus delta x. All right, now how would I find the y value? Well, again, I would take my x value, whatever it is, and plug it into that function. So the best I can do is to write that f of x plus delta x. Darn, I run into that. All right, so then there's my ordered pair for this point, x plus delta x, f of x plus delta x. All right, now if I've got both of those points, now I can come over here and I can actually calculate the slope of the secant line. I can do the change in the y's over the change in the x's. So change in my y's from over here is going to be f of x plus delta x minus f of x all over the change in the x's, so x plus delta x minus x. All right, doing a little um, simplification there, x minus x is going to go away. So then that leaves us with f of x plus delta x minus f of x all over delta x. So the slope of the secant line is the difference quotient. The difference quotient gives us the slope of the secant line. Okay, so that like that, that's a good thing to 
to see where that comes from and where the they, they just didn't randomly make this formula up. Okay, that's what it comes from. The slope of the secant line, the difference quotient is the slope of the secant line. Okay, now usually before I we talk about this or where the difference quotient comes from in my classes, um, we do analyze and talk about a limit process. Okay, so going back and kind of looking at what what I do in my classes there, we talk about this idea of a limit early, earlier than we, we identify what that difference quotient really is. But we talk about, okay, in general, if I've got some point on a random curve f of x, and I've got a tangent line that, right there, and I only know one point in that line, I don't know the function, I don't know anything else, I can't find the slope of this tangent line. Because I don't, ha I don't know two points on that line, I don't know any other information. Okay, so then we start going, okay, well, let's take a random secant line, and if I take a secant line like this, pick a point Q up here, and I calculate the slope of that line, well then, well how close is that to the slope of the tangent line? Mm, not very much, not very close, that's pretty far off. So then, how can we maybe get it better? Alright, well if we pick a point Q closer to point P, alright, and we try that, slope of that secant line. Okay, well still not going to match, but it's definitely better than the first one. And then if we pick another one closer, the slope of this line would be closer to the tangent line. Okay, so this is the idea of a limit. So as I pick Q's closer to my P, then that slope of each one of those secant lines gets closer and closer to the tangent line. All right, I have my students do this with just actual points, not with the difference quotient like we had done just a minute ago, but just with random points. All right, because if I told you what the curve was and we knew what those points were right there, then we can actually do a numerical analysis of what's going on and we can actually show those slopes are getting closer and closer and closer to that slope of that tangent line. Okay, so this is the idea of a limit because as we are picking Q's, closer to P, all right, well, stop and think about what's happening to delta X, all right? If I pick the first one, X is that far apart. When I pick the second one, it's this, that's how much the X is, all right? My delta X, my change in my delta X is approaching zero as I pick Q's closer to P. My delta X is approaching zero. All right, that's the idea of a limit. When that delta X is approaching zero, that's my idea of the limit. All right, well, if I do this with just regular slope formula, it doesn't make sense, but if I start taking the limit as delta X approaches zero of the slope of that secant line and we do it as the difference quotient, all right, that's leading us into the slope of the tangent line. All right, so that was an awful lot of ver verbal writing down. So let's let's summarize what we said here. Okay, we had the difference quotient. Okay, just regular difference quotient formula was f of x plus delta x minus f of x all over delta x. All right, and we showed in that very first diagram that that's the slope of the secant line. Okay, now, after the difference quotient, when we started taking those secant lines and approaching, you know, picking closer and closer ones to our tangent line, well, what were we really doing? We were doing the limit of the difference quotient. That's what we were doing. And we were letting delta x approach zero, which is really the limit as delta x approaches zero of f of x plus delta x minus f of x all over delta x. And we saw in that previous diagram as we did that, as we let delta x approach zero, as we were picking q's closer to p, that was giving us the slope of those that secant line and it was getting closer and closer and closer to the tangent line. Alright, so when we take the limit of the difference quotient, we get the slope of the tangent line. Alright, so obviously this is going to be a good
foundation for leading into what a derivative is. All right, but if you've got a really nice sound background of that difference quotient and what does it really represent, all right, it comes from that slope of that secant line. And then when we apply the limit process to it, and we take the limit as delta x approaches zero of that difference quotient, it is leading us to that slope of the tangent line. All right, so um, more conceptual and theory in this video, but a really good video to get an underlying understanding of where we're going to go when we introduce the definition of a derivative. Definitely, thanks for watching, and be sure and share with your friends. Thanks.